What if I say yes? How are you? I am great. How are like it's a beautiful day here where I'm at, and yeah, I'm excited to be here. How are you? It's it's sunny in your city. Yeah, <laughs> because here it's super Atlanta. cold. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta, so yeah, it's which it's been great. The past couple of days has been sunny and like a nice warm temperature, not too warm, so mm -hmm. like it's tolerable. So it's like a nice you can go on a nice walk and not feel like you're burning up. So I like that a lot. Oh, good. I have yeah. to go out and and walk a dog in a few in a few hours, and I'm I'm gonna have to bundle up because it's super cold. But anyway, I'm happy that you have the sun <laughs> that I'm missing over here. <laughs> I'll, I'll send some your way. I'll send some your way. <laughs> Thank you. So, Ariana, can you please tell our audience who are you? Yeah. Um, so I am Ariana Rivera Goldberg, and I am an artist. I am um a creative who wants to do good in the world and wants to be good. Um, I'm a lesbian. Um, I'm a friend. I'm a lover. I'm a family member. I am everything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's who I am. Okay. Now tell the audience how we know each other. Um, we know each other from a friend. I have a, my I work with uh, this amazing human called Marty. Um, and he's such a blast to be around. And he approached me um he approached me uh, and said, I have this I just went through this cool experience with um, with you with Lucia and um, and he asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. I didn't even let him finish the sentence because I just trust him and think he's such a cool person. Don't tell him that because you know we we have um we have that cool friend vibery at work, so he can't know that I think very highly of him. But <laughs> um yeah, that's how we know each other. And this is actually the first time we're seeing each other face to face. We've been texting a little bit, so I'm really excited to be here. Um and it speaks volumes of I mean if 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 I know Marty, I know that you're just as amazing person so I'm excited to do this with you and get to know you even a little bit better thank you well now I'm going to tell my side of this my side of the story um <laughs> so Marty was very good friends with my brother Hector who passed away in 2016 and so after Hector passed away I decided that I was going to adopt him as one of my brothers because I have another two Luis and Jorge so um he's like a close reminder of my brother and i love him very much oh. and since then we have been in a relationship i mean uh, communication um when he was in new york and then when he moved to to the land of the sun, <laughs> where you have the sun. Um, and so he was my first interviewee in english for this channel is episode number oh. two. So um, I have been interviewing the people I know, the people um, that are close to me. And at some point, I decided to open it up to people I don't know. So then I started asking. And then mm -hmm. um, Marty had told me about a very cool project that you have that has to do with sneakers. Yep. And so he sent me pictures and I was like, wow, that's so cool. And so at some point I said, so Marty, did you think <laughs> she would be interested in being interviewed by me? <laughs> oh my God. He's so such a this is, It happened. So thank you so much for having said yes to coming um, to this, what if I say this channel? Okay. Yeah. So having said all that, Ariana, tell us mm -hmm. about a moment in your life when you decided to say yes? Yeah, you know, um, when you send me that, when you send me Hector's words, by the way, which, which extremely beautiful. Um, I love, I would love the way he wrote about it. Um, I thought about so many different things because, I mean, we just kind of experienced that. And I understood, you know, the comfort of no, 
And so I thought about three huge uh, areas in my life where I've said yes, and, and I'm happy to speak to one of them, but I just want to share them. Um, saying yes to being open a lesbian, mm -hmm. uh, saying yes to loving and loving the way that I want to love. So I practice polyamory. Um, and then saying yes to being an artist and not just like doing it, but owning the title, which uh, was such a struggle for me for many different reasons. Um, I think just to Hector's word, Hector, is it Hector, right? Hector? Hector's Hector, words. Hector, I, Hector, I, yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to talk about the artist part because when I read his words and I saw his picture, his drawing, and then I saw his picture, I was like, I get it, you know? Um, there's a moment in my life, you know, my mother was a single mom and, um, you know, she was, she sacrificed a lot for us to make sure that we had what we needed, um, went through, we went through a lot of struggles and she noticed that I was very artistic. I, you know, I was also, I had musical, uh, abilities but she wanted me to have a job. You know, she worked in corporate America. She's like, I need you to have a job that's like reliable. And so I had that stuck in my head throughout my entire youth. Um, and even when I was graduating high school, but there was something so deep inside of me that was like, I have to be a creative. Like there's, I was not good at school. I was not good at math. I was not good at history. I was good at like, truly, like I graduated high school with the bare minimum and I was like how, how am I going to survive <laughs> and um it had to be art it had to be being a creative and you know can I, we define what your mom meant by stable job oh stable job I mean she anything in corporate right like uh even you know anything in computers and data she wanted me to be a lawyer at one point because I was a smart ass when I was younger and I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, that was one of the no's in my life. But, <laughs> um, you know, in, in, but I tried, I wanted to, I, I understood what she was saying, right? Like growing up in such a struggle, I understood what she was trying to tell me. It's like, I'm doing all this so you can have an opportunity to be able to have a more stable life than what we have right now. So I understood, but there was such a huge calling for me to be a creative that, that I couldn't see it any other way. Um, and I, but I told myself no many times until one day, like it was, um, I, I went to, the reason I picked the college that I went to is because it had three drawing classes in the course. And I had no, I, I was graphic design and I had no idea what graphic design was. I mean, I was <laughs> nine, I was 18 years old and the school called me and was like, are you interested? Because they went to my art class and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to college. I can't afford that. Um, and I went, to, we visited the college and I saw in their course, they, you know, they spoke all the language that I didn't understand with financial aid and all the things business-wise and corporate. But then I saw the course and all I saw was drawing one, drawing two and drawing three. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I want to come here at whatever cost that is. Um, and that's, that was the beginning of my, you know, graphic design career. I, you know, went to school and I graduated and I've been very privileged and lucky to have found great opportunities that have elevated me to where I am today. I mean, working with Marty. Um, but I think those steps had to happen because I, I created that security that my mother wanted for me. I, I kind of found a loophole, right? I created the security, being creative, but I I was still not the artist that I wanted to be, right? I wanted to paint every day. I wanted to sh like, I wanted to sell my paintings. I didn't want to just paint to have it in my house and stuff. Like I wanted, I wanted people to to be inspired by my paintings, and I wanted people to be excited when they see them. I wanted them to ask questions, and so. Um, I started drawing on anything and everything. And then I finally decided one day and everyone would tell me, you're such a good artist. I was like, I'm not an artist, I'm a graphic designer. And then like, I don't know, it was like maybe five, six years ago, I finally owned the title. And I said, yes, this is, this is me. I need, this is, this is, has been me the whole time. Um, and this has to be for me. And 
ever since then, I've been painting on anything and everything I can get my hands on. Shoes, for example, like, um, you know, that, how did that start? I told my nephew, like, you know, he was throwing away these Air Jordans and I was like, what are you doing? Like, you know, he's, don't do that. We can make those have a second life. And I started Googling how to paint shoes and I painted his shoes. I put some Tom and Jerry's on them. And then he had some other ones that he was going to throw away. He's like, don't do that. And I drew some Ed and Ed, Ed and Ari, Eddie's, it's a cartoon here. And he like loved them and he used them for another two to three years, which it's amazing, right? It, it's just recycling life of it. And then I told Marty, you know, I, I, you know, I, was, I do some of mine too. And I, Marty was telling me, I was like, man, I want some sneakers with, I think it was like Gwen, um, is it Gwen Stacy, the, 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 the Spider-Man, one of the spider women. And I was like, I can paint that for you. Don't, don't buy that extra, like extra <laughs> shoe for that. I, we can customize it. Let's make it your way. And he took, a, he took faith and gave me his shoes and we did it. And they're one of my favorite shoes. Um, cause he, I loved that he was so good with like the simplicity, but like the simplicity, but you can still tell that it's like, it's that custom, like, you know, uh, you can still tell it's like the, the nod to the spider, spider girl. Um, and I love that. I love projects like that. I love people that like to wear art and appreciate art and want to be a part of it. Uh, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't accept, if I didn't say yes to like, and accept myself for being an artist and not just an artist that paints on canvases but artists that, that paints on walls on oh my god just about anything shoes uh <laughs> I mean you know what else I mean I've, I've painted on so many things so um, what's your definition yeah. of artist and why did it take mm -hmm. what what did it take internally to make you feel that you were an artist finally Man, so my definition of artist, I think, oh man, I think an artist, uh, this, I love this conversation because I think, you know, I think this, this can diff change over time. You know, we've had, we've had different time and eras of art, right? We had the, when Leonardo da Vinci, right? When he would paint, in, in the Renaissance, when nobles were painted, right? Those, those were called artists, but you know, then, Van Gogh wasn't really thought of an artist until his passing, but he's one of the brilliance of today. I mean, even Frida, who hid behind, he didn't, she didn't hide behind Diego, but didn't have the statue of um, Diego until later on when she should have had it even before him um, with her magnificent creativity. Like, I think artists are people that can express themselves with different mediums, whether it's words, whether it is color, whether it's paint, whether it is, I mean, just about anything, glass, uh, pottery. I mean, just, I think artists are people that create a visual expression of what's inside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that can be in any medium, right? Um, and so for me, the dialogue that happened within me is that there was so much sacrifice that happened for me to be, um, you know, I lived in Puerto Rico when I was, when I was a baby and, and we, moved, we moved here when I was eight years old, you know, running away from a very difficult uh, situation. And so my mother, there was a lot of sacrifice and a lot of like um, situations that, that were difficult. And so there was a lot of pressure on her and there was a lot of pressure on her kids, right? It was like, there's a lot of sacrifice we need to make sure that this is not in vain. Um, and again, so like making sure that you have a job that supports you and you have a, a, a job that meets your, that you can meet your needs. Um, and before that, there wasn't a lot of knowledge that create, creative people were create, that had a good career, right? It was like, you were a teacher, you were a lawyer, you were a doctor, you were a pilot. Um, you know, those are the things that have a steady and in, in, in things that you would want in comfort. Um, I wanted none of that. <laughs> um, so I think the dialogue with me was, I need to make sure that I can support myself and support and help and give back to my family 
um, before I can truly express in a world that doesn't always, you know, work out. It doesn't, you know, it's not as steady as those other jobs. The truth is though, it is though. Um, nowadays, you know, you can, people, I support myself with being creative, um, both whether it's graphic design or when I do customized shoes or when I do murals or when I do commissions and big canvases, like those are all things that have helped me continue to um, do what I love, which is creating. So it's, it's, it's actually, feed, it's like a circle. It's like a, it's feeding itself, right? Like I'm making it so I can keep making it you know um yeah when you were a kid what things did you create <laughs> um oh this is so good um so the one thing i can so there's two things. i used to also play the guitar so i used to make a lot of songs my mom used to tell me i used to repeat them to her and she loved it um but one thing i remember the first thing i think i ever really created artistically for my mother besides drawing on the walls and having to clean it up afterwards. I definitely, I definitely was the kid. I was, me and my sister were definitely the kid. It was really more me, but I instigated my sister to do it with me so I wouldn't get in so much trouble. Um, <laughs> I was the baby, so I definitely got my siblings in trouble a lot. But um, I would get Crayolas and draw on walls all the time. And my mother would come home and then she would force us to clean it because of course, like who wants, who wants that? <laughs> um but the one thing that I would say I'm, I'm very proud of I wonder if she still has it when we first moved here um she used to work for IBM to Atlanta when we first moved to Atlanta because we from Puerto Rico we went to New York for a little bit and from New York we went here mm -hmm. um and she got a job with IBM South America who you know at that time they were helping with computers um and, and she was the secretary of one of the managers and they were really kind people Um, and so Crayola was one of their uh, clients. So they would bring paper that had the Crayola on the top. And my mother, they would just leave it in the office, not do anything. So my mother would bring it with to me and give it to me. And so I was excited because, you know, I was like, oh, I get to do something and it wouldn't, it doesn't cost as much. So I painted my mother a, a book about a flower growing really, really tall. I don't remember the rest of the story, but I remember just making that making that booklet and each each page had a painting. And then there was a story on the on the other side. And it was a terrible writing, of course, because I was not a good writer. But <laughs> still am not. Um, How old were you when you did that? I had to be no more than like it had to be between eight to ten years old. Okay. Um It, and I remember, I don't know if she still has it, but I do, I do remember one time we came across and I was like, oh, I remember this. I remember like sitting there and, and drawing the flower and writing the story. <laughs> um, but I just, I think the most beautiful thing is because there was so much chaos around me. That was one of the first times that I can go back to where I have never felt more at peace while I was creating, you know? Mm. And I think that was one of the first times as a child that I was able to, there was quiet, there was quiet in my mind, there was quiet in my surroundings. And I, it, it like, I think that's what the beginning of like, I cannot not stop, I cannot not do this. Like, this is like, okay. this is the state of mind where I want to be at all times. You know, the world's a very chaotic place and we, we, we all do that. So I think that was one of the first times I can really pinpoint of feeling the quietness in the focusness, the focus and attention that I, I had while creating that. Is there any other time between then, between that book and now that you remember was crucial in you, in this path that you were taking consciously, unconsciously towards art? Yeah, I think, you know, um, then when I became a teenager and I was rebelling, I would sneak out of the house and go spray paint Oh. Um, you know like yeah I think I became it almost became it almost became like I was consistently for most of my youth my pre my teen years in my early 20s I think I was consistently looking for that feeling um that feeling of peace and that feeling of like oh I'm in that I'm in my world where mm -hmm. no one's opinions matter like it's my opinion it's my voice 
Mm -hmm. right? It's like, I'm hearing my voice and what I'm saying is coming out Mm -hmm. and there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's not even a yes and, there's not a no and, it's a, this is mine, right? Um, I think there throughout, yeah, I think throughout my youth, uh, my teens and my my early 20s, I was consistently searching for that. And then there was one time where I feel like as an adult, I was able to recognize it um, again, you know, because before as a kid, you didn't, I don't, I don't think I had the knowledge or the maturity to understand what was happening. I just knew it was something was happening, right? It so felt I think good. It felt good. So at the age of 20, I, I, at the age of 25, 26, I'm 31. And my, uh, Friday's my birthday. So I'm, I'm, 30, oh, I'm turning 31. Thank you. And so I think at the age of 24, 25, mm-hmm. um, I started going back into, I need to start painting again. I need to start drawing again. I need to let my design career take a, a, a seat in the back and, um, and, and really, cause designing is more about doing what other people need and not what you are like, not your necessarily your creative voice, but your creative talent. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's, it's a business for me, not for, not, not a pleasure um so I think it was around then and then there was a moment where my dad passed away nine years ago and there was a moment where I started missing my roots um I was always very connected to my Puerto Rican heritage even my father like he was very consistent on making sure that we spoke Spanish in the house Mm -hmm. that's you know thanks to him um you know I don't know if you want to do this but but thanks to him I I'm able, Spanish is my first language and I'm able to speak Spanish. Um, if, you know, and, and I, I mean, I'm not, I, I wouldn't say I'm phenomenal at it. I wouldn't be a bilingual translator, but I can, <laughs> you know, I can go to other countries and, and survive and have a great mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of him, I have this sense of pride of where I come from. And I, I started missing him. There was a point in my mid twenties that I started really, really missing him and missing that prideness because I felt like I I'm, I don't have anything I feel super passionate about right now I have everything I need I have you know I have the steadiness of the career that I have um, I'm financially in a really good spot where I feel like I'm meeting all my needs and I'm helping my family members where I need to help them mm-hmm. um, but I didn't feel like I was putting out anything my voice wasn't being heard mm-hmm. and while missing him I started going back to my roots of like Oh, I miss Puerto Rico. I don't know enough about it. Um, and so I started re-educating because I, I did know about it, but I, re- I started re-educating myself. Um, and I found and fell in love with these masks that I have been painting for since then. And they're called Vejigantes. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. You know what they are. So like there's this carnival mask. Mm-hmm. And it's one, of the, it's one of the things in our culture that, that has a slight representation of all the culture in Puerto Rico, which is Spaniard, uh, West African, and Tainos, and indigenous people. Um, And I fell in love. And I was like, how do I interpret this in my voice? And I started painting these masks. And as I started doing those, there was that radio silence again. And I was able to hear my voice again in my head. And I was like, oh, God. And I could not get enough of it. Mm -hmm. And so now like, that's, that's what I draw consistently. Um, That's what I paint consistently. So yeah, those, that was a long winded answer, but those it's throughout my life. I've, I've heard moments. Um, I think recognizing it was in my mid twenties when I started. My husband was born in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Sorry. You froze. And then I started talking and then you came back. (laughs) So I didn't hear the (laughs) ending of your phrase. (laughs) Oh, I know it's yeah, no, it's just uh, I heard that your husband's from Puerto Rico. But yeah, that's my 20 is is when I intentionally knew that that's what I was doing. So. So um, when you at the beginning, you mentioned that you um, want to create art that makes people think. Yeah. Think what yeah. <laughs> think about what what is it that. Um, Maybe now, the art that you're creating now, what is it that you want the people to think about? I I want to, I want to, um, 
I want to spark a thought. I want to spark an emotion. Like I want them to take a moment, right? Um, I like to do a lot of positive things. I think for I do very different many different things, but I think if I if I were to reference my mask, I want them to ask questions about it. I want them to ask, what is that? Why am I so attracted to this? Where is this from? What's the history behind it? And why do I like it so much, right? Like, what are the things that are like bringing to you? So like my mask, I give them all um, a, a, a torso, right? To give them like, kind of like a person. So it's almost, it's, you see an actual, it's not just the mask that I paint. It's the, it's a person that's wearing it, but it almost looks like the mask is the person. Mm -hmm. So giving the mask a personality, giving them the eyes, my favorite, my, one of the last things I love to paint on the mask are the eyes because it almost instantly comes alive to me. Oh. As soon as, as soon as I finish the eyes, it's like, I, it's a person. It's, it's not a person, but like, it's a, it's a personality. It's a thing. It's, it's alive. It's a living organism and it's a painting, but it's, there's something about it that I just cannot I, I told myself, like, I can see this be someone if they were, if they were to stand here, like this, it would, it feels right. It feels real. Um, so yeah, well, I there's the to... phrase de los ojos son la ventana del alma. Um, yeah. Yeah. Viste. Exactamente. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactamente. No, but it's verdad. It's, 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 you see so much. And the thing is, I don't even draw the detail eyes, the humans that we have, we have, um, I draw just like these huge black, I, well, actually, can I show you an example? Is that okay? Yes, of course. And Do you're going to have to send me pictures of all these <laughs> so I can add them to the, to the end of the video. Absolutely. Here, I have two. I have, I have two. I'll show you this. This one I just recently did in November, but let's see if we can see it. Uh, can wow. you see that? Yeah. But doesn't it like if you see this, you see the chest, like you see the, you know, yes, um, the the gold chain. <laughs> the Even it has, does it have an, an apple, um, Adam's apple? Yes, yes, <laughs> he's yes, <laughs> that's cool. Um, but yeah, so like it's just, and they all just look slightly different. I mean, look at this one, like this, and then and they all are just, you know, they're they're within the same family, but they're all different. Um, do you name them? Do you give them names? You know, I have not given them names. I, that's a really good. I have not. That's interesting. Um, I do like when I there's one that I I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a picture of, and okay. I call her. I call. She's the only one that I've given a name to, and it's it's not really a name. It's a title. I call her Mama, because mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a giant painting. I have it in my living room. It's a giant, giant painting of a vigilante and it's a mother breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And she has no shirt, it's just breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And I call her, I call her, I, at first they asked me what's the title of this? And I was like, Mama Vigilante. And I was like, actually, no, take off Vigilante. It's just Mama. Mama. <laughs> and it's Mama. So every time I, every time someone comes over and they love that, I was like, oh, thank you. That's, that's Mama. And it, but she's so real, like in my mind, like she said, she's, she's a, She's a person. She's a living thing. And I love that. So what made <laughs> you name that one, but not the others? I think this one was, um, I think this one felt, I think the other ones were more about how can I show more of the mask? And when it came to this one, I wanted, I was, it was the time where abortion rights were happening, you know, in, I mean, we're still, we're still fighting those. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, when, when um, in the United States, all those, all those laws were happening in women's rights and it's just like exhausting, right? It's just like, oh my God, like we are, we give life <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's insane. And it's, it's honestly, it's about, it's about power, right? It's about how to control us a species that has so much power and how to control that. And that's what's happening. And it's like, when you can just really celebrate how beautiful and powerful women can be in non-binary people, like how they can be and how we can, we can create life. Like we give life and it's and not just by birth, but like by our nurturing. And um, so I felt that and I was like, I have to do something. And 
I had a gallery coming up and I was like, I, I'm going to have an audience um, and I need people to react and not just Americans, but Hispanics, Latin Americans. I mean, everyone, I wanted everyone to react. I wanted everyone to like, you know, talk about it. So I was like, you know, everyone always has a weird feeling about a, a, a person breastfeeding a child in public which I think is just ridiculous. I, I just, yeah. just get over yourself. <laughs> like they are, they, first of all, congratulate the woman, the person, because they are, you know, surviving and giving life and taking care of their child. And that's, 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 that's they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like leave it alone. <laughs> anyway, so I had such a, I just had, lo tenía en el pecho. Like I was like, lo tengo que decir. I, lo tengo que enseñar. Lo tengo que expresarme. Pero I was so tired of, Speaking because people weren't listening, right? People, were, all the protests and stuff. And I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna make. I don't. I mean, it's I'm, I'm a huge one, massive <laughs> painting. I'm gonna put a mask on it so you can like so it it because the los ojos como tú dices son o sea, la puerta del alma. They attract people, and I'm gonna put that, and that's what's gonna bring you in, and then you're gonna notice that this is breastfeeding, like they're breastfeeding. My mom's breastfeeding. And you're gonna sit there and just look at it and it and 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 just experience that moment. And that's what I wanted. Um and, and it was honestly one of the hardest things I've done to, uh to that moment because I had to draw hair, I had to draw, make sure the baby was proportionate, <laughs> make sure the breast looked real, not like I wasn't trying to make her look sexual, but I wanted her to look like a real, like a real person. Like, you know, and not, not just, you know, I say woman. But like you know just women assigned but there's of course like non-binary people as well but I, I just wanted to express that level of motherhood in how it's okay to look at it it's okay like it, it's it's okay that it happens not look at it but it's okay that it happens mm -hmm. um and I wanted to put it in front of people mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to give them a choice if they could look and not look I wanted them you're gonna see it and it was one of the biggest pain it was the second this biggest is painting. It. And you cannot avoid seeing it. You couldn't it. miss it. And it's like a bright yellow behind it. You couldn't miss it. Behind a white <laughs> wall, you could not. As soon as you saw, as soon as you walked in, it's like the brightest, like the <laughs> brightest of all. And I was like, excellent. That's it. I, when I was walking around um, at the opening, the gallery opening, I was, I was so giddy because people started gathering around it and just you know I couldn't hear the conversation because you know there was music happening but I love that I saw almost all different types of people looking at it I saw young men older men um I saw their expressions some were just like out of curious like you could tell they were curious they were like what they would get closer um and, and again like I didn't draw her in a way to show like she's beautiful she's beautiful Um, but it wasn't like, I'm going to show her imperfection. Her boob is not perfect. It's like flapping a little bit over because that's, <laughs> that's, how, that's what happens. <laughs> you know? Um, that, that would be. It wasn't supposed to be for a cover of a magazine, not like, oh, Photoshop, no. perfect. Not Photoshop. <laughs> you know, you know, some of us, you know, we have the three layers. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. You have the three layers. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful because it's true and it's natural and uh, <clears throat> it should be, it, no one should be disgusted by it or it, should, it shouldn't be, you know, censored in any, that should, not that, you know, other things should be censored, not that, but anyway. <laughs> to we can talk all day to about this that. day, <laughs> is that the piece of art that you're most proud about? Or most proud of? That's that would have to be. Yeah, that, that's definitely in my top, uh, if not the first one, the the first, um, the first painting. I have. I think the second one has to be with one of the commissions um, that I did a couple years ago. I was so excited, um, and it was a family, a complete stranger, which I was like so excited. Like you want one of my paintings, and I was very happy about that um and I was like well I want to make this particular one to fit your character so I like would reach out to the wife the guy commissioned me but I talked to the wife uh of the person and they um would describe and send me pictures of of my client with the suit and I surprised them 
with the vejigante wearing the suit that he oh. likes so much. And he, I mean, that was probably, I, and it's, and what's so beautiful is that that painting is living in San Juan right now. Really? Um, it went, it went back to my home country and I could have not been more ecstatic. Like, I was like, this is in my home country. Like, this is, it's in Puerto Rico. Like, what? <laughs> um, so those are my two tops that I, I feel very proud of and proud of me and, and how I expanded my mind and was able to voice and create for for people, you know? It's a beautiful circle. I mean, the circle yeah. we were talking at the beginning is like, you left Puerto Rico, you at some point started missing your roots, your dad, Puerto Rico, and then you went back through a painting, which is like your soul. You yeah. went back yeah. in the so most emotional. beautiful way to live in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I know. I was like, it felt such it felt so surreal and it felt like I remember when he when they picked it up I had to take a moment of just just standing sitting still because I was like this really actually happened like this painting and he sent me a picture and I'm just like I cannot <laughs> I'm just, it looked amazing he put it like where is a hallway that you like it's it's near at the end of one hallway and in Puerto Rico, you know, there's tiles, um, you know, because it's high and you don't want carpet. And whoever has carpet is, I'm sorry, <laughs> if you have carpet in Puerto Rico, that's fine. Uh, but it's tiles and it's reflecting the sun's coming in and it's reflecting on the floor. You can see it at the end of the at the end of the hallway from the bedroom. And he was like, I love, I love opening my door. And that's the first thing I see. And I was just like that, like that makes my day. It's like that just so yeah, those are the two top paintings that um I'm I'm the most proud of. It's also very interesting the order that you so the first the one that you choose as the most important one is Mama. Mama. Mm -hmm. Mama. Which is giving birth to you. And then the second one is your mm -hmm. art that you gave birth to. Mm -hmm. It's all beautiful. We, I mean, you can, um, you can create a mini book like the book of the flower. And now you can create a book about if your, um, your process to, from when you were a kid to now, and and that painting going back is you have a story there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it. I'll talk to Marty. We'll make that story. <laughs> there you go. So I'll, now, put, I'll, I'll put you in the credits. Thanks to Lucia for the, <laughs> for the interview. We've come to this conclusion. <laughs> well, I'd be honored. So. Um, quick question. Yeah. Not every artist likes to explain their art or talk about their art. Mm -hmm. So where do you stand there? If you have um, your paintings in a gallery mm -hmm. and you're, you're walking by, are you mm -hmm. okay with people asking you what you wanted to express or you, and you what you wanted to convey through, with that piece of art? Or do you prefer to just leave the viewer to decide on their own? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I, 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 I love to educate. I love to have conversations. I love to speak of my culture. I love to speak of my people. I love to speak of colors. I love to speak of creativity. And I love to speak of how people of different perce perceptions or perspectives. Um, I think it depends. I think, you know, I think, a perf I think for me, I do get asked a lot by what is that supposed to represent? And I've, there's moments where I look back and I ask them, I was like, what do you see? Um, so I think it just really depends. I think for me, if there's a very specific and emotional message attached, um, I think sometimes um, it, it's hard to become super vulnerable with strangers like that. Um, and of course, as an artist, that's an interesting th thing to say because I, I do paint. I mean, even Mama was like a painting of an inside, like, like come on now. Um, I think it depends. I think it depends where I am mentally. I think um, it depends who I'm with and who's asking the questions. I am happy to educate. I'm happy to explain what these 
where this inspiration comes from. I'm happy to use my vocabulary, right? The gigantes, you know, and describe the different cultures that make up Puerto Rico and describe the music that, you know, inspires me and I listen to and inspires this, you know, these masks and these colors that I use, the house, the, the, the colors of the houses, you know, um, the food, everything. So <clears throat> I think it's a variety. It's it just, it's dependent of the environment. It's dependent of the people that are participating in that. Um, most of the time I really do enjoy asking them, what do you see? And I get a reflection back. And I think it's, I think it's quite wonderful to hear those perspectives from different and how they're receiving the art versus how I want them to receive it. Mm -hmm. When you paint, you mentioned that you get radio silence, but, mm -hmm. or at least you used to when you were creating, when you were at, at, uh, in your uh, teenage years maybe, or, or younger. Mm -hmm. But now when you paint, do you put music on? Like what's your, when you're painting, what, what has to happen for you to feel like, yeah, I want to do this. I love that. Um, you might laugh. I like, I like boleros. Boleros. <laughs> boleros. Okay. Como, a mí me encanta Celia Cruz. Celia mm -hmm. Cruz cuando estaba en Cuba, you know, she did the quizás, quizás song. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, Javier Solis. Um, I mean, there's so many, but um, my dad was a, a, a hopeless romantic um, and he loved boleros and um, I love boleros. I love, you know, even in English, I love the blues. I love, um, you know, Nina Simone and, and all that. And um, there's something about boleros that feel so emotional and authentic in music you know i love music nowadays you know I, ro i love reggaeton i love salsa i love merengue i love all of that i love bachata but there's something about boleros that feels like a very musical spoken poem um mm. and it's just such it's the perfect beat it's it's the perfect um rhythm um mm -hmm. you know it's like i'm being sung to directly to me and then i then I can, it feels like, okay, I'm in my space and it's calm and it's, um, I sometimes have my rum and Coke because that's my special, that's, that's my favorite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I clean, it, but the area has to be um, to a certain level of, of cleanliness, right? And then there has to be like, um, I put those incense sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and then I just, I put my paintbrushes and colors out um and just start going it, there can't be a television there cannot be someone there having a conversation with me because i will not be able to concentrate it mm -hmm. has to be it has to be a very solo experience for me to be able to get the radio silent even with the music to, for me to get hear that voice that's inside of me mm -hmm. um so that's yeah that's how i set up but anytime my... during the day when you feel more more inspired or you work yes. better during uh, early in the mornings before the sun comes up, when no one's oh, awake. Oh, that's super early. Oh yeah, but no one's awake and no one's on yes. social media and no one's pinging you and texting you. No, the work is not pinging you and texting you. There's no expectations. Like you can make your café con leche, get back, <laughs> you know, pet, I have two cats. So I pet my cats for a minute and then I just sit down and I make, and then there's time at night like when everyone's falling asleep, like it's around nine to 10 and I'll, I can, I can squeeze in an hour or two of painting a couple of things. Um, but if you were to tell, ask me, when is my most creative time? It is very early in the morning. Before we're talking the sun about comes what up. time? Oh, um, I would say between five to seven, right before the sun comes up okay. uh, or when the sun's coming up, like rice. Um, it's perfect. I just, I wake up, even if I'm tired, I wake, I take it slow because everything feels slow. Everything, the, the, everyone's sleeping, um, even including my cats. <laughs> so like we wake up very slow and I walk slowly, I pet them and I'm like, just say good morning, very softly. I don't want to break the silence. I don't want to break the energy. 
of the calmness that's happening. And then I just tune in and it's, oh, and I put my music bien bajito, tú sabes. O sea, que se escuche, pero no que esté, tú sabes, con un, que no es una fiesta, es un, es para que alguien que me hable, you know, whisper in my ear. <laughs> y mi café con leche, que a mí me encanta. And I go, I go in, in my journey and I love it. I Now, get sad when I have to leave it. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. of course. <laughs> It's the perfect place to be. So when you create something, do you plan? Do you think in advance what you want to create and then you go and execute it? Or are you, my twin brother also paints, Jorge. And mm -hmm. so like, for example, there are times when I wanted to, I wanted him to draw something for me. And he's like, no, 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 I just paint. Like he gets the paper in front of him at whatever comes out, That's what he does. He cannot plan anything. I don't think that that was Hector's process. Hector may have been more, more planned, more, yeah. a little bit more structured. It's a different style. What's yours? Yeah. Well, I think um, I had I've trained myself because I'm a graphic designer during the day, um, <laughs> artist <laughs> at night. Um, <laughs> I've trained myself that I'm able to create uh, uh, create someone else's vision into a paper, shoe, or canvas. Um, but what I my favorite things to create for people is when they don't even ask for it, and I feel it inside that I want to make it for you. I just recently, I mean, perfect perfect example. Jesse Marty's wife's birthday. Um, just passed and it was so cool because they were like I was like oh we're all a Pisces and she's such she's such a kind human and she shares she has shared space with us a few times and I've really enjoyed her company and I um, I salute her for having the three boys and I'm like how do you do three boys <laughs> like, and <laughs> I, I mean I love Marty but I I it's three boys I get it um, I and so You know, she said one moment, it's like, just getting alone time is great. And like having my time. And I was like, oh, it's beautiful. And I love that. And I could relate to that. And th that kind of stuck with me. And I kept thinking about her and I kept thinking about, you know, I get that. And I wanted to kind of give her something because that moment just felt so profound for me because I was like, it, again, I, I could relate to, um, I don't have boys, but understanding that I want some alone time in I can hear, I can, you know, just be me. <laughs> and um, so I made her something and I asked her, what are her favorite three, her top three favorite colors? And it was colors that I've never really would use. Um, and oh. there's nothing wrong with that, but it challenged me mm -hmm. and I loved it. I remember thinking to myself, this is not a great knock. <laughs> and like halfway through, I was like, oh, I got to keep pushing through. I didn't put a person in that one, which I, I now looking back, I think that's, that was a little off uh, character for me, but I think it's because <laughs> I was being so challenged by the colors mm -hmm. that I, um, but I loved it though, because then it reminded me of like um, a, a reptile, uh, the way that, because it was like a green, a um, gray blue and lavender. And yeah. the, right, those are so different. And I loved it. I was like, wow, I would never pick those colors for me. And, but what I created, I loved, and I was so excited. I was nervous because I always get nervous because, you know, like to give someone a painting, sometimes they, you know, they don't want to hang stuff that they don't like in their house. Uh, so I was, I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, what if she doesn't like it? And I just had to be like, if she doesn't like it, that's fine. I made it with kindness and stuff, but she loved it. She texted me um, and she, she very much appreciated it. And I was so happy to give her something that I was able to express, that she liked, that I was able to express uh, because I thought of her. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is I dream a lot. So there's, that's one mm. way that I also do. I have dreams and I, you know, I, whether it's a color palette, it's um, just a person, a figure. Um, I sometimes go and just really quickly draw or write it down. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't have time to draw it, so I write it down. And I, and if it stays in my mind consistently, I, I go back. I have to draw it. 
So I think it's like, I think it's like your twin brother. It's more of like what's in here. If you want, if you want something that reflects me and reflects you um, into the, the drawing in the canvas, it mm -hmm. like, it has to come from here. Um, but again, I've trained myself because of my graphic design career that I can create for anything. A client, I can create someone else's vision into the, mm -hmm. into the canvas. So okay. two more questions before we go to the no. Okay. I'm here. Um, have you created something for your mom and is she now okay with the kind of job you have? <laughs> Going back to this, she wanted you to have something saved, something like a stable job. Ooh. <laughs> I, um, very proud of me for my job. Um, I started, you know, I've become very successful and I've become very stable financially and, and independent. Um, so she's extremely proud of me in that way. And she calls me her Picasso, um, which I love. I know. I love that. I have not created anything for my mother, um, for a very long time because my mother is my harshest critic. <laughs> And it's, oh. I love, I know I love her and that's okay if she sees this, she knows it's true. <laughs> um, and so I'm very sensitive to my mother. I mean, just like any child, right? Like, you, you know, we want our mother's approval and I know I have it, um, you know, I know I have it. But my mother is a very um, independent thinker herself. And if she does not give me and I love, and I love it immediately, I feel like it's a failure, <laughs> and, which is not true. But that's just that's just my perception, um, mm -hmm. and so I don't create much for her. Um, but I do create and show her. She is consistently being shown what I do create and what I'm a part of, um, and I think that's okay. I think I think I don't know. Maybe that's a question for her. But <laughs> uh, but I do know that she's very proud. I mean, I she, I was able to the gallery said I could take one person on opening night because it was it was going to be a busy night. And I decided that I wanted her to be my person, um, my one person to come with me. And she started crying. It was very sweet. And she kept bragging to everybody, you know, very mom, like, that's my, that's my daughter. That's my daughter. She's the artist. And, you know, she has a New York accent. So, you know, like she's short, you know, and she's Spaniard too. So she tiene fuerte, tiene carácter fuerte. So she's like, that's, that's my daughter. That's my artist. And I'm just like, it, that was beautiful to see. Um, so yes, yeah, she's proud. She's, she's happy where I'm at. I have been independent since I was uh, at the age of 17. Um, wow. I'm sure she didn't want me to be that independent very early, of course, because that's not a part <laughs> of our culture, but um, I definitely needed it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Well, very nice. But one more before we go super quick to yeah. the to the now. Your siblings, how many do you have? In what order are you? And what do they think about your art? I have many siblings. Um, from my mother's side, I have two more siblings. So I am the youngest out of nine, eight. Um, I say nine or eight. My my father um What do you mean <laughs> nine or eight? Well <laughs> why is the number not clear? Es que, es que mi papá era puertorriqueño. Well, uh, yeah, it's a different. My, my father was married multiple times. And so there's okay. several kids. And he's had, he has many kids and many kids out of wedlock. Um, okay. he, he has at least three out of wedlock. But the thing is, he didn't legally claim them. So we know of them, but they were not raised with us. Um, okay. So so that's why i say um there's many of us <laughs> but you're the youngest but of them all i am the baby of them all i was okay. um i'm i'm the baby my dad after after my mom became pregnant with me he said no puedo más and so <laughs> he decided that was it that i was the last of it um <laughs> um and i'm glad because i i love the baby treatment he would uh he he me me ñoñaba mucho eh, eh, yo era la bebé like de verdad like every todo todo lo que dicen de bebé es verdad porque mi papá 
mi papá, que era un, que era un hombre, tú sabes, eso machi, mach, o sea, machista, y que, que, eran, o sea, que siempre quería ser fuerte y siempre de todo. Cuando mi mamá, a mí no me gustaba peinarme el pelo, pero cuando mi mamá se enojaba conmigo y no quería peinarme el pelo, mi papá me sentaba y me decía, vente, bebé. Y yo me sentaba y él bien, pero bien con mucho cariño me peinaba el pelo, porque yo tenía mucho pelo antes y era, o sea, era vicio, me lo peinaba con mucho cariño. Y yeah, everybody would get so mad and jealous. They would be like, it's because she's the baby. And I was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll see. <laughs> so, yeah. And so your siblings, the ones that um, you know, have, uh, uh -huh, what do they think about your art? Um, my, my, you know, that's a great question. Actually, they don't really give much of an opinion. <laughs> my sister. <laughs> Angelica, who I'm the closest to in age, mm -hmm. um, she is is very supportive. She loves my art. She's always asking me to make stuff for her. So I guess in that way, she's consistently supportive. She's like, I need you to make me this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> my brother, he's, a, he's very supportive too. Um, he doesn't hang a lot of art around his house. Um, mm -hmm. But he you know um but he does come like I do small markets throughout certain weekends and he comes and he buys a couple things here and there and he likes it I've given I gifted him one time I drew he's a huge Yankees fan and I drew him mm -hmm. Derek Jeter who is one of his favorite players and he loved it he frames it and has it in his in his um, bedroom mm -hmm. so they're they're very supportive um I wouldn't say they're my number one fans but they're very supportive <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's go quickly to the moment in your life when you decided that saying no was a better option. Oh, I mean, easily. Um, so, I mean, even, <laughs> even when I said yes, it was, this was a no. Um, I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Again, I was not a good student. I was not, I mean, even to this day, if you put, if we talk about school subjects, I'm just not, I cannot do it. My, <laughs> my brain is like, I, what are you talking about? Um, so I had two options because again, I was trying to financially find steadiness. I was going to go to the military um, or that was it. Like I was going to go to the military and thankfully, because I went and visited this one art school. It was the only art school my mother was willing to come to see with me. Um, I said, you know, my mother said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want, I want to go to art school. And so I said no to becoming, to, to go to the path of being, um, going through the military. And I cannot tell you that was one of the best no's I've ever said in my life because I'm very happy where I am. And I don't, I, I think I would have found my way back to art because it just, it's so, it's my soul, honestly. It's my breathing. It's the air in my lungs. Um, but I think that would have taken me a much longer route than I what I did now. And so that, no, like, so that I always said that, like, it was like, I'm so glad that I was like, now I'm going to high school. <laughs> I'm curious, um, why was the military an option? Why, what, why was that the other option? Why were it? My dad was a, my dad was a cop. Ah, um, okay. And so serving your community was something that um, I've seen. And it also, the military offered opportunities that people like, you know, that some people, it's hard to refuse, right? Like you go to the military, they, they pay for your college, you, you, you know, they give you a certain amount of benefits that again, for, for someone that young, who's, who's trying to find a better life and trying to find that stability that your mother, your parents want. Um, mm -hmm. At that time, that was the only thing that felt like a feasible option um because college is not affordable <laughs> and it's still I mean I went and I'm still paying it off like 15 years now oh 10 years 15 years 10 years now <laughs> after I graduated college you know it feels longer um <laughs> I'm still paying those student loans and there was times where like I had a hard time figuring out how I'm going to pay this back 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I did, you know, the, it was just, it was an option. It was, it was a, in the moment made the most sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and, for, and it's not that it's a bad option. And then I'm not, you know, whoever chooses that, I totally understand. And, and it just wasn't for me. Um, and I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very happy. Throughout your um, formal education, nobody realized that you had this artistic vein. None of your teachers or counselors or anybody could figure that out. I, I, I think I was not a very good student. Um, I, I did not behave very well. So I don't think teachers, most teacher, I think there was a couple here and there that gave me attention and understood that I do have artistic ability. Um, I definitely, my mother wanted me in, she wanted me to play the violin, which I absolutely did not want to. Um, I wanted to play the guitar, but that wasn't an option here. Um, so she put me in violin and I had to be there. And because I was in orchestra, I couldn't take art classes. And when I w- had autonomy, I think it was the 10th or 11th grade, I quit orchestra without telling my mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that did not, that conversation was not fun. Um, when she found out that there wasn't a concert, she's like, you know, I haven't been to one of your concerts in a while. I was like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-huh. Um, (laughs) that was not fun. I mean, it's funny now, but, (laughs) um, and so I quit orchestra behind my mother's back and I went into art class and that's my teacher, my art teacher. She says, you should, you should follow this. You should, there's something here. You need a little more discipline because I couldn't sit still for the life of me. <laughs> um, but once you have a little more discipline and more understanding of what you want to do, like you, you've got it. And so she's, I mean, thanks to her, I felt like in her encouragement, I was able, I felt confident to tell my mom, I, this is where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, not, not a lot of teachers though, because um, again, I was not the greatest. <laughs> the greatest student. I was not I was the student that sat in the back and talked a lot and drew you know I drew a lot in my notes and so they would get upset that I wouldn't taking notes and when tests came around there was so much anxiety they were just it was it was bad but I survived and we got through it and now I'm a successful uh creative in the industry working for big brand names that it's a lot of fun to do did that not fitting in the did- did this formal schooling did anything to your self-esteem? Yeah. I mean, even to this day, yeah, even to this day, I'll say I'm not, I'm not an uh, intelligent and uh, intellectual. Like I'm, I'm, I, I'm not. Um, I mean, which is vocabulary that I'm changing because it's not the correct vocabulary. That's a, I think that's a wrong way of. Um, classing people because it's it's not right. You know, I think people can have people can have a lot of knowledge and not have had gone to school you know um so I think for me I would feel like I'm not smart enough or I don't have the discipline to sit long enough or don't have the vocabulary to express myself the same way for people to understand me I've learned that it's okay if people don't understand me it's okay for them to ask questions to clarify further what is that what's what's not okay is for me to say i'm dumb that i'm not able to say it in a way that you understand me i i'm speaking clearly i'm just not speaking the language you know you understand i'm not you know what you're what i'm saying is not for you mm-hmm. because there's someone next to you that gets me mm-hmm. um and that's super important and i that was a hard lesson for a very long time and the more I sat into that uh, in, into that and, and learned how authentic I can be with myself in the way I speak, because I always like Spanish is my first language. And so some of the things I say, I have to say it in Spanish. And even in this interview, I went to Spanish because the, the expression was so much, it, it, just, it brought through more than I would say, be able to say with English words mm-hmm. um, and expressions. Um, once I learned that that's also a part of me and a part of like who makes me who I am who is a who and I'm you know I feel like I'm pretty cool like and um (laughs) 
And that's okay. Like, it's okay if someone doesn't understand me or doesn't understand my art. It does not mean that I'm not making sense. It just means that what I'm saying is not for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, um, I'm remembering a conversation I had with another friend in one of my interviews, Gisela. She, um, she's now, you know, she has been working in CUNY TV for a long time. And mm -hmm. she had the same, like a very similar um, background in terms of in school, she didn't feel like she, she belonged. Um, but the visual part was always the way she could communicate. And mm -hmm. I mean, she has won with CUNY TV, she has won the program she produces several Emmys. And so it's like, we were talking about how sad it is that we are, um, we are used to seeing things from just one perspective with a very, simple definition of what intelligence is mm -hmm. and there this there's this others like a huge spectrum of intel different intelligences but i don't know if they're the intelligences <laughs> the plural <laughs> of intelligence anyway all this spectrum of people who can do beautiful wonderful things that don't fit this single very simple definition of what i've worthy human being should be and so mm -hmm. it's so sad because when you go through school and that takes a toll on your self-esteem and it's so hard to overcome that i mean i'm very yeah. happy that you and Gisela found their way but it's not not everybody manages to overcome that and not everybody manages to understand that they're valuable as they are they're intelligent in their own sense even if a lot of people don't get it because they come from this very simple minded perspective of what human beings should be. Which is, I, it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, I mean, what a wonderful thing you're saying because the earlier, right before I jumped on the call with you, I had a person uh, on, a, on a phone call that called themselves uneducated. And she is one of the most brilliant person on that phone call. She is the most unique and most creative person. I like, I truly admire and respect her. And I had to message her privately because I did not want to tell her anything in front of everyone. But I said, please never, ever use the word uneducated when it comes to you or anyone really, but absolutely to you because you have an abundance of knowledge and creativity that someone, a lot of people in this phone call wish and dream could have <laughs> like yes. please um i think the word i am um, uneducated is is a word is a word to oppress um it's not it's not true i i find that to be a very fictional word because we are we all have knowledge um we are all living and we are all learning every day there's people that might not go through a structure mm. um, program that society have placed that have made up for us mm. to become productive, you know, participating in this, uh, participating in the society made up rule and game, um, you know, in order to make everything. Yeah, we can talk about this other, but like, <laughs> I think I think everyone in this planet has. Is, are educated humans they just you know they have different experiences they have they're different creatives um they know different things but they, everyone knows everyone has knowledge and therefore the word uneducated is not correct um you might not have the same knowledge which is okay because that's how you like that's how you share knowledge that's why it's so important to share um when when it's asked to be shared um yeah man Yes, I agree with your friend. I'm glad that she did the same thing. I'm glad we we're all doing it, which is a super important because um, these molds that are put in for us, we shouldn't have to fit into it if we don't want to. Um, and that does not mean we're not successful or we're less than someone else that does fit into it. Um, yeah. You can design your own mold. You can create yeah. your own mold. You can paint your own mold. You can <laughs> yes. 
absolutely and yeah. and people will love you and people will admire you and people will see you and people will understand you um and that's beautiful because going back to what you said at the beginning is you wanted to express who you were so that's mm -hmm. what everybody wants in this world you want to express mm -hmm. who you are the way you are however you want is why is that not seen as something super cool and valuable every like every single day everywhere you go yeah anyway um <laughs> before we finish what is next in your um in this adventure that you are creating art what is it so, what is something that you would love to say yes to oh i want to say yes to being a full-time painter I, meaning like, no graphic design no graphic design um which i'm grateful for graphic design and i think it has a value and a place in my life Um, I think it has opened opportunities for me um, and I'm grateful. It has connected me with a, a, a plethora of people. And, um, but I want, I want to create a difference with my paintings. I want people to come to me and gift my, you know, these paintings and this part of my culture and expand um what are my ancestors left behind for us to appreciate and love and expand on that um and for others to love and appreciate um and learn and teach even further and expand there's a saying that someone taught me and i can't remember exactly who said but you know things and people die twice right when they leave their physical body and in the last time their names their names are said um mm. and that was so profound to me especially when my father passed away um and i'm not gotcha. sure where they have it and i honestly cannot remember who said that to me um but it's so true and um i want to continue what has been left and been told and and given to me as the gift and keep giving that gift in in my in the way that i can express it um so i want to be a full time i want to say yes to being a full time painter and that being my life source for the rest of my life. Do you have um, like a certain amount of years or months when you would like, yes? Yeah. <laughs> I Can you say that this... publicly or not? Uh, you know, I, I, I haven't, I'm very, I am a very authentic and like very transparent sometimes to my own detriment. Uh, yes, <laughs> when I started this job that I am having with Marty, uh, that I'm working with with Marty, I told myself, in five years, I need to start making moves to be this. And that was three years ago now. So I have two years left. Okay. It's so, <laughs> it's so nerve wracking. <laughs> it makes me like, it gives me the butterflies like right here. Um, <laughs> which is a I really think, good sign. Yes. And I think, I think I could do it. I think I could do it. I just need to, I need to focus, which I am doing and I'm creating the steps to make those things successful. So it's happening very slowly because of course other things come up in life. Um, but my deadline's coming and I hope I stay true to myself and I still say, I say yes in that moment when it's ready to time to say yes. So. Well, that's the perfect way to end this conversation. <laughs> I wish <laughs> that in two years I, I can, Uh, text you or call you or see you in person and say, so, Ariana, show me. <laughs> show me your life. Me too. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. Um, I look forward to that question. I look forward for when you ask me. <laughs> well, Ariana, thank you. Thank you so much for having opened your heart and tell us your story. Um, please send me pictures. Of yes. as many things you want to share of the things we talked about your art if you can find as your mom about the the book the, the flower yeah. that if she has that we need a picture of that 
I, I, I'm gonna call her later. I wonder if she does. I, I, okay, I'll ask her. Let's see. What, let's see if it comes out. <laughs> okay. And so send me the pictures of, um, yeah, everything you've created and more. <laughs> yes. That you wanna share here. Absolutely, I will. <laughs> um. Thank you so much. I think we were more than an hour. I'm so sorry because I know you need to go back to work, but it was yeah, a pleasure okay. meeting you. I'm hoping that one day we get to meet in person. We will. Uh, thank you so much, Ariane. Thank you.